Educate Our Youth. My name is Aja and here on Educate Our Youth, I teach parents how to own their lives and how to own their children's education. Well, do you know what today is? It's Teaching Tips Thursday. Teaching Tips Thursday. Woo, 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 woo. Teaching Tips Thursday. Well, thanks for coming in for Teaching Tips Thursday. Teaching Tips Thursdays are my way to be able to teach you skills that can help you teach and help your child. If you subscribe to Educate Our Youth, I will be here to help you understand exactly how to help your child. Today, we are going over fourth grade fractions. <laughs> there is so much to cover with fourth grade fractions that I just couldn't put it all in one video. So everything you need to know about fourth grade fractions will be broken into two parts. So make sure you watch both parts. That means it's really important for you to subscribe. Hit that subscription button. That way you can stay tuned. And next week when I upload part two, it will pop up in your notification bar. Not only is it important for you, subscription is really important for me as a content creator. So please let's help each other out by subscribing. If you missed the third grade fraction video, check it out. Well, let's get started. Fractions are a crucial part of the fourth grade curriculum. So today we are going to cover part one, which includes equivalent fractions, benchmark fractions, and comparing fractions. So before we get into today's video, I strongly encourage you to watch the everything you need to know about third grade video. You see it above me right here. You will also see it listed below in the comments and also on the end screen of this video. So when you're finished watching this video, please check it out because fourth grade fractions heavily revolves around your child mastering and understanding third grade fractions. So today we're going over understanding the equivalence, equivalent fractions, review of comparing fractions, benchmark fractions, comparing fractions, and fractions on a number line. I've also included the standards right beside the skill. Here we have a visual representation of a whole fraction. We know that our whole is our denominator and we see that we have three total parts in our whole. We know that our numerator is the part referred to or the part shaded in and we see that we have two parts shaded in. So here we have two thirds. So we are going to partition each one of those parts into three parts. So each one of those groups, I'm going to make three groups within that one group. So I just partition each one of my three parts into three parts. So you see that we have a total of three parts that were partitioned into three parts and that gives us a total now of nine parts. So we had three parts partitioned into three parts. So three times three gives us nine. For our numerator, we're going to look at just the part that's shaded in. So we had two parts shaded in and we partitioned those two parts into three parts. So we have two times three and I can count. That gives me a total of six shaded parts. So, two-thirds is equivalent to six-ninths. Now that we understand exactly how equivalent fractions work, let's create an equivalent fraction of our own. So here we have four-fifths. We are simply just going to create an equivalent fraction by multiplying our numerator and our denominator by a whole number. I'm just going to do two, for example. So, four times two and five times two. I'm just going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by two. Whenever you're multiplying the numerator and the denominator by a whole number, you're simply dividing or partitioning the unit fractions into smaller fractions. We just did this, you guys. That's referred to the same amount shaded or the same spot on a number line. The value does not change. Four times two would be our new numerator and five times two would be our denominator. So I always start with my denominator first. So five times two is 10 and four times two is eight. So four fifths is equal to eight tenths. Here we have four holes. We understand that we have four holes because we have four complete circles shaded in. Well, I can look at four holes 
as four over one because within one of those holes, I only have one part. So one would be my denominator. So any number over one is the same thing as a whole number. So four and four over one are equivalent. I also have four more circles. I have the same shape, the same amount shaded. So I know that these are equivalent fractions. If you don't quite understand how these are equivalent fractions, once again, please watch the third grade fraction video. It goes over all of this. So once I know that these are equivalent fractions, I see that I have eight parts and within each one of those parts, I have two parts that make up one whole. So I have eight halves. So four over one, which is equivalent to four holes, is equal to eight halves. I also can check this knowledge by simply multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by two. So four times two is eight, and one times two is two. Yes, it checks out. These are definitely equivalent fractions. Let's review comparing fractions really quick. So whenever I have the same denominator, I simply can look at my visual model or I may just know that when the denominators are the same, the number with the larger numerator is the bigger number. So one six is less than three six. On contrary, whenever I have two fractions and the numerators are the same, I then know the number with the smaller denominator is the bigger number. So, 2 6 is greater than 2 x. Let's review benchmark fractions because benchmark fractions is a big part of the fourth grade curriculum as well. So here we have one whole. We're going to partition that whole into halves. I mark my halves on my number line. I'm now going to partition those halves into halves, giving me fourths. I mark my fourths on the number line. I then partition those fourths into halves and mark those eighths on my number line. Wherever I see my fractions on the same part of the number line, then I know that those are equivalent fractions. With fourth grade fractions, it's crucial that your child knows those benchmark fractions. So those are halves, fourths, sixths, eighths, and thirds. Because now they're gonna be required to compare benchmark fractions. So I want to compare one fourth and seven eighths. I'm circling my benchmark fractions. I see my fourths and I see my eighths. Well, I noticed that the denominators are not the same, so I can't use that comparing fraction knowledge. I then look, are the numerators the same? Nope, my numerators aren't the same. So the next thing that I'm going to teach my child to do is to think, are they benchmark fractions? And here, yes, I know that I have fourths and I have eighths and those are both benchmark fractions. Now I'm going to look at which number is closer to my whole. And I see that seven eighths is closer to my whole than one fourth. So one fourth is less than seven eighths. Let's do that one more time. Now let's compare one half and three fourths. I want to know is three fourths less than greater than or equal to one half. So now I know they don't have the same denominator, they don't have the same numerator, but they're both benchmark fractions. So now I just have to figure out which benchmark fraction is closer to a whole, and I see that three-fourths is closer to my whole than one half. Three-fourths is greater than one half. Since we understand how to compare benchmark fractions, let's understand how to compare any fraction. So here I have one seventh and two fourths. I'm going to go through my thinking points. Do I have the same denominator? Nope. Do I have the same numerator? Nope. I don't have the same denominator nor is the same numerator. So now I'm going to think, do I have benchmark fractions? I see that fourths are benchmark fractions but sevenths are not benchmark fractions, so I don't know my sevenths easily. So now I have to get what's called a common multiple. And a common multiple is simply a number that is a multiple of both numbers or a number that both numbers can go into. So now I'm gonna think, is it easier to get my numerators the same or my denominators the same? Hmm. 
definitely my numerators. One and two, I know that one times two is two. So both one and two both go into two. I'm gonna change my numerators. So I have one seventh and I know that I'm going to multiply my numerator by two. So whatever I do to my numerator, I must do to my denominator and vice versa. So now I just multiply across. One times two is two and seven times two is 14. So I have two 14. So now I know that one seventh is equivalent to two 14. So now I can easily compare two 14 to two fourths because they have the same numerator. Well, if they have the same numerator, then the smaller denominator is the bigger number. So two 14 is less than two fourths. Let's use our mental math to check our work. So we just did the problem and we got that 2 fourteenths is less than 2 fourths. Well now I'm just going to use my mental math. I know my benchmark fraction so I know that 2 fourths is half because it falls halfway on my number line. So now I just have to figure out what is half of 2 fourteenths. Well 7 fourteenths because half of 14 is 7. Well now I just compare 2 fourths and 7 fourteenths. So yeah, I'm correct because 2 fourths is less than 7 fourteenths. So 2 fourteenths must be less than 2 fourths because it's not the same as a half. So now we just use mental math to check our work. Let's do this one more time. Here we have 3 fifths and 9 fifteenths. I look at my denominators, are they the same? Yeah, nope. I look at my numerators, are they the same? Yeah, nope. Am I dealing with benchmark fractions? Yeah, nope, nope. So I don't have the same numerator, denominator, or benchmark fractions. So now I have to figure out what is my common multiple. Remember, a common multiple is a number that is multiple of both numbers or a number that both numbers can go into. Well, I know that three can go into nine and five can go into 15, so I really could do either one. So let's do three fifths, and I'm gonna multiply both my numerator and my denominator by three. So three times three is nine and five times three is 15. So now I'm ready to compare because I found an equivalent fraction to three fifteenths. So now I have nine fifteenths and nine fifteenths. I know that those are equal. So these two fractions are equal. Nine fifteenths is equal to nine fifteenths. Awesome. Here we have three fourths and five sixths. Well, I see the visual representation of both fractions. I notice that I have the same shape of the same size but I don't have the same amount shaded, so these aren't equivalent. Now, if you could put the fractions on top of each other, you could certainly see which shape has more shaded or which shape is closer to having a hole shaded. But in this case, I can't do that, but if you had a worksheet or something you were working with your child with, you could certainly use that method. So now we're gonna go through our thinking points. Do I have the same denominator? And you see, we do not. Do we have the same numerators? And I see we do not. Are we dealing with benchmark fractions? Yes, but typically we have halves, fourths, and eighths together because they are visually easier to deal with together. And then we'll have six and thirds together because they are grouped together. So if you don't have a method where all of your benchmark fractions are within one hole, then it might be harder for your child to understand which of these benchmark fractions is closer to a whole. So I'm just gonna do the safer bet, which is to find a common multiple. I can find my common multiple of three and five or my common multiple of four and six. In this case, three and five is just easier for me. So I'm gonna multiply both my numerator and my denominator by five. So if I multiply three times five, that gives me 15, and four times five, that gives me 20. So I have 15 over 20. As you see, 15 over 20 does not have the same numerator or denominator as 5, 6. So I also have to find the common multiple in the other fraction. So I'm going to stick with my numerators and get my numerators the same. So in order to do that, I'm going to multiply my numerator and my denominator by 3 this time. And 5 times 3 is 15. And 6 times 3 is 18. So now I compare. 15 over 20 and 15 over 18. I notice that my numerators are the same and when my numerators are the same, the fraction with the smaller denominator is the bigger number. So 15 over 20 is less than 
15 over 18. So now let's look at how fractions can be decomposed into smaller fractions and how smaller fractions can be added together to give us a bigger fraction. We're used to looking at number lines like this where we have eight holes. We are only going to look at one hole and how the, within that one hole, I can partition that hole into eight separate parts. This means that each one of those parts are representative of one eighth. So each part is measured as one eighth. Well, if I only wanted to look at this part of the number line, I see that I have one, two, three parts. And each one of those parts are one eighth. If I wanted to see the total amount of my parts, I could add one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth because each one of those parts are one eighth and add it together, they equal that part of the number line. So one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth is three eighths because my denominator or the total amount of parts I have is eight and my numerator or the part that I'm talking about is three. So three eighths falls on this part of the number line. We're really going to go into adding and subtracting fractions in part two of this video. So make sure you check that out next week. Now let's look at this number line. We have eight holes. This time, however, we're only going to look at two holes. So I have my two holes and I have partitioned each one of my holes into four parts. That means that each part measures one fourth. If I were to just simply mark each part of my number line, I would have one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, which tells me that's a hole. And then I'm going over my hole, which is five fourths, six fourths, seven fourths, and eight fourths. And we know that eight over four and two are also equivalent fractions. So now I just want to look at this part of my number line. I see that I have that part marked six fourths, but let's understand why that six fourths is truly six fourths. Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six parts. Hmm. And each one of those six parts measures one fourth. So if I add it or put all of those fourths together, I would have one fourth plus 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 one fourth. And that gives me my denominator, which would be my total number of parts in a whole, which is four. And my numerator is the part or the number of parts that I'm referring to, which is six. So six fourths. So now you see that six one fourths are equal to six over four. And that six fourths can be decomposed into one fourth plus 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 one fourth. So today you learn how to teach and help your child with understanding equivalence, equivalent fractions, benchmark fractions, comparing fractions, and fractions on a number line. Please make sure that you watch part two to the fourth grade fractions where I go into adding and subtracting fractions. Now, after all that talking I just did, I know that you now know how to help your child with fourth grade fractions. Don't forget to check out part two next week, so make sure that you are subscribed below. And I will also include in the description bar some really cool resources, including some worksheets that I have created to help you truly help your child. I will also include the link to the third grade fraction video that I've mentioned before so that you can truly go back and make sure that your child remembers what they learned last year so that you can help and teach them the fourth grade fractions. Well, thanks for tuning in to Educate Our Youth, especially on Teaching Tips Thursday.